Hey everybody, previously I did a video on how to create a forecast showing uh, the forecasted values with, with a dotted line. In this video today, I'm going to show you a different sort of forecast, one where you can have a range of high and low values and showing the, the, the possible area that your forecast could cover. So again, this is going to be the end result. And I've already got some data that I'm going to work with. So I've got some annual dividend payments here and this is how much they've been growing by each year and so i want to do an estimate to say you know what the dividend might look like in future years so what i'm going to do is create some extra extra headers here one for a, a base amount a low amount a high amount and then the difference and then up here i'm going to select a high growth rate and a low growth rate and so my high growth rate, I'm going to say, is 10% because in some years, the company's raised it by 10%. And I'm going to also set a low growth rate of 5% just to see what that range might look like when, when compounding it over, over several years. So I'm going to start with calculating the, the low rate here. And just like with my, with my previous forecast, you know, I want to make sure that everything starts with the the act the last actual amount okay and so the difference is just going to be the high minus the low and so for the low amount i'm going to take this times it by one plus this growth percentage for the low rate and i'm going to freeze this cell copy this all the way up and now you can see it's incrementing by five percent i'm going to do the same thing for this one except in this case, I'm gonna take this times it by one plus the high rate, freeze that, close it, and then copy this up again. And the difference is gonna be, again, calculate the high minus low. For the base amount, I'm gonna just set this equal to the low call. And I'll show you why I do that in a second. So that's all the data that I need to make this chart work. Next, I'm going to go to insert and I can just click on recommended charts. I'm going to modify this anyways. And I'm going to select the combo one just because it's going to allow me to put both an area chart and a line chart. So for the actuals, I'm going to stick with just a basic line chart. And then for the low, I'm going to use a line chart as well. For the base, I'm going to use a stacked area chart. And for the difference, also a stacked area chart because these two want to stack um, on top of each other the growth rate i'm going to get rid of so this is my chart right now it doesn't look anything like what i had already what i had previously so what i'm going to do is first flip these values again format axis categories in reverse order and so now it's looking a bit more like uh like a forecast with the with, with the years getting higher what i'm also going to do is right click select data and I'm going to uncheck the growth rate because I don't want that showing up. I don't need that for this purpose. And then for the for the base, what I'm going to do is right click or not just click on it and change it to no fill just so it just so it hides that. And so now you can see we've got something that looks a, a bit more like a forecast. We can get rid of this in here. And so what you could do for the for the top one, you know, you know, make it. Uh, dark green color and put in that dashed amount a dashed line for the forecast for the bottom one maybe we can put this one red to say this is a bit of a worse case scenario dash type again and then for this the shaded area this area where it can fall anywhere in between what we could do is under the fill option there's an option to use a, a pattern fill and so what I could do is use anyway, something like the like these checkered values here so that way we've got that range. And then, you know, I can change this one to, since it's actuals, change it to a solid black color. And there you go, you've got a forecast that has your high and your low amounts and shows you the, the possible values that, that it could end up being by the time you get to 2025, depending on which growth rate um, it follows. So that's a quick overview, how to do forecasting with ranges.